brothers and sisters back home. Amen. To bring them back, not just to the assembly, which is important, mm -hmm. but to bring them back to a state of mind mm. to recognize and realize that they need God, yeah. that they need to be under His constant umbrella of protection, that they need to be in the presence of the Father. Mm -hmm. So as we continue this quest to bring them back, we want to make sure that we have an understanding of, of, of what we are dealing with, uh, a delicate, very delicate situation. <laughs> Uh, we were dealing with those who have uh, fallen by the wayside, as we sometimes call it. Uh, those who have uh, left the Lord, amen, have left the safety of God the Father. We, we have to understand the delicate situation, but we want to bring them back. We want to do all that is within us, our part, to bring them back. Because Jesus said it this way, what should the father of man be gained the whole world? and lose his own soul. Mm. Or what will a man be willing to do in exchange for his soul? So first and foremost, we have the soul at stake. Mm -hmm. In our minds, and as we make an effort, the soul is at stake right. above all else. <laughs> and you don't want to see anybody <laughs> lost. Jesus himself is not willing that any should perish. But they all come to repentance. And if we want to be one with him, we must have the same mindset. That there is no one that you look down on so much that you will be happy to see them in a lost condition. Right. So let's we make this effort. We've been looking at Luke chapter 15. And I believe a lot of what we need to <laughs> understand has been found in this particular text over the last several weeks. In Luke chapter 15, we have touched on the subject when the angels rejoice in God's presence. We talked about wandering souls come home. And then last week, we talked about from the subject that brother was dead and lives again. So bear with me this morning as I touch briefly on these and then I want us to talk from the subject this morning, the day after the return of the Son. The day after the return of the Son. Keep that in mind, that title as I read my text this morning to you. In Luke chapter 15, we in verse number 1. Keep in mind the day after the return of the Son. But Luke chapter 15, we in verse number 1, says, then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes remember saying, This man received the sinners and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man do you have in hundred sheep? If he lose one of them, does not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it. <laughs> and when he had found it, he laid it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he comes home, he called together his friends and they were saying unto them, Rejoice with me. For I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you, likewise, joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented more than over 99 just persons that need no repentance. And Jesus goes on to say, either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, does not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently until she find it. And when she had found it, she called her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Mm -hmm. Likewise, I send you this joy in the presence of the angel of God, over one son of their family. And then he goes on and says, After talking about how the angels in heaven rejoice in God's presence, Man. he talked about uh, the sheep that had wandered away. Not even knowing how to get back home. Yeah. He talked about the coin that was lost because of the negligence of the woman. Didn't even know 
it was lost. But once it was found, talk about how she rejoiced with her friends and neighbors. He says there was equal rejoicing in heaven when one sinner come home. More than it was over 99 just to need no repentance. Mm -hmm. And then he tells us about a man, a certain man had two sons. And the young of them said to his father, verse 12, Father, give me the portion of goods that fall to me, and he bowed unto the under's living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with rise and living. I know many of y'all can recount this by heart by now, amen. Mm -hmm. And that's what I would like for us to be able to do, amen. But we count not just the, it's just the story, the parable, but the lessons that go along with it as we go through this. Yeah. And when he had spent all there was a mighty famine in that land and began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed the swine. He would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven in thy sight. I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe. Not just a robe, but the best robe. Put it on. Put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And bring him the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead, was alive again, he was lost, and found, and they began to be merry. The one your soul came back home. But then it says in verse 25, Now his eldest son was in the field, and as he came and drew not to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brothers come, thy father has killed a fat cat, because he had received him safe and sound. And he was angry, and would not go in. Therefore came his father out, and entreated him. And the answer said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgress I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which had devoured thy little with hardest thou hast killed for him the fat calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry, or it was proper or right that we should make merry and be glad for this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. We've dealt with the sheep that was lost, didn't know how to get back home. We dealt with the corn that didn't even know it was lost. We dealt with the son who was lost and knew how to get back home. We talked about the older son who was lost and hadn't even left the house. The older son who didn't go out and participate in and do as the younger son had done was at home with the father the whole time, but he was lost because of his attitude towards his brother when he came back home. Well. It's important that we understand that you can be right in the house and be lost. You can have never left the house and be lost. You see, God sees and knows our hearts. Amen. And he sees how we interact with people and how we deal with people and our attitudes that we put on display. God sees all of this. So it's very possible that you can be in the house, never left the house, and still be in a lost state. Amen. And we see that in this young man, this older son, he was angry. 
And he found out about the treatment that his brother, who had gone out and wasted his father's uh, goods, his resources, how he had wasted them. He was angry with this young man when he came back home, safe and back in the house. He had the nerve to be angry with him. Hmm. But his father said, you don't, you're not seeing this the right way. Amen. Your brother was lost. He was found. He was dead. Now he's alive again. He said, I got you to see, I got to get you to see this different. And we ended that text with the Father saying to the Son, we ought to be rejoicing because your brother is back home. But what I want us to talk about this morning, I want us to talk about the day after the return of the Son. I want us to talk about the day after the return of the Son. Because we see what the Father did and how he reacted to his son that was lost and was found, was found and he was dead and he was alive. We see how he reacted and we see how the older son reacted towards his brother coming home. And we see how the father entreated him. He said that he listened to him and he said, now i got to explain something to you. I need you to see this different. But even the next day, I want us to make sure that we see things the right way. When that person comes back home, we want to make sure they have the right attitude towards that lost soul, that brother or sister who has come back home. But then there's the next day. Now I want us to, 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 to grab hold of a few things this morning, to hold on to, to help us understand the importance of how we conduct ourselves the day after the sun returns home. Because it doesn't just stop with the rejoicing. The day they return home. There's a next day. Amen. And it's important that we understand how we are to conduct ourselves, our attitudes, the display that we put on the next day. Remember that boy was upset. He was disappointed in the actions of the father. Can you imagine yourself being disappointed in God for accepting the lost soul back home? But that's exactly what was taking place in this case. This old son reacted uh, in a way that showed that he believed that the young man should be met with a, a continuous scolding or continuous uh, rebuking or continuous chastening. He should have been basically just cut off. Well, guess what? He'd already been cut off. But now he's back home. Yeah. This is not the time to cut off. This is the time to embrace. Yeah. He'd already been cut off. You already felt what it felt like uh, and knew what it, knew what it felt like to be at your Lord's. He already knew that. This was not a time to cut him off again. This was not a time for chastening. This was not a time to humiliate him. This was not a time to question him. This was not a time to tell him that he needs to get down on his knees and beg us for forgiveness. This was not a time to tell him you need to show your worthiness to be allowed to return. Man. Which one of us has the Father said to us, show me your worthiness? Mm. I forgive you, but you still got to show me your worthiness. Mm. Those who remain at home have an awesome responsibility for those who have fallen away for whatever reason. And that lost soul comes back home, they need to see and hear some things. They need to see as well as hear some things. They need to see forgiveness. They need to see what forgiveness truly looks like. And forgiveness does not look like reminding them over and over, constantly about what got them in the situation they was in in the first place. Mm. They need to see forgiveness. How often do they need to see forgiveness? Well, Jesus said this way in Matthew chapter 18 in, in response to Peter's question. Matthew chapter 18, verse 22. This is what they need to hear. This is what they need to see. In response to Peter's question, Matthew chapter 18, verse uh, 21, then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? 
Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. In other words, Peter, just as many times as he comes to you and asks for forgiveness, you need to forgive. They need to see what forgiveness looks like. They need to hear forgiveness. No matter what the situation they have been, they need to know that we have forgiven them for whatever they may have done against us because God the Father has already forgiven them. Amen. They need to see and hear this. Amen. What else do that lost soul who has returned home, what else do they need to see? They need to see meekness. Paul says this way in Galatians chapter 6. Verse 1 and 2. They need to see what meekness looks like in the party who never left the house. In the party who's been there with the Father, doing the Father's will. They see they need to see meekness in that party. In that individual, they need to see meekness in you. Paul says in Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, you who are spiritual. Restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Right. Consider thyself, lest thou also be tempted. What is meekness? Meekness it can be uh, understood to be power under control. Yeah. Yeah. Meekness is not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of power under control. You got to understand that person is in a very vulnerable position. And if you are there to accept them, to welcome them back home, depending on how you come at them, you can do a lot of damage. Amen. Maybe they did something terrible to you. And you sought them to, 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 to tell them that I'm asking that last year too, that you just, 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 just forgive me and, and that, you, that you correct this wrong that you've done to me and they, can, they continue to refuse. And then they finally make up their mind to come back home. You don't take this opportunity to, to just blow it over them, to, to gloat, to make them feel bad about leaving in the first place. You don't take the opportunity. You exercise meekness. Notice he says, you who are spiritual, restore. What's the intent? To bring them back fully. To what level did the father bring the son back when he came home? He didn't get the old rabbit and roll and tell him to grab something and throw it on him. Get that horse blanket over there and throw it on him. That's, that's all he's worth. He said, bring the best robe. He said, put a ring on his finger and, 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 put, and put shoes on his feet. He didn't, he didn't uh, uh, demote him. He brought it back to the same status that he was at when he left. A spirit of meekness said, brother, sister, come back home. Come back home, you ain't lost nothing. You ain't lost when you, you ain't lost your position. You are still my father's son. You're still my father's daughter. You're still my brother. You're still my sister. Amen. I'm glad to have you back home. Amen. So they need to see forgiveness, what it looks like. They need to see meekness, what meekness looks like. They need to see patience. They need to see patience. As Paul told Timothy, you want to know what patience looks like? Give them time. Don't be overly hard on them. Give them time. They need to see what patience looks like. Peter said to Paul, uh, excuse me, Paul, Paul said to Timothy, Timothy, let me tell you what patience looks like. I want you to have a good, clear picture of what patience looked like in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 15. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 15, Paul here says to Timothy, he says, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. And Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. He said, how be it for this cause I obtain mercy that in me first Jesus Christ may show forth all patience or long suffering. Amen. For time to them which should third hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. He said, You want to see what patience look like? Paul says, You want to see what patience really look like? Look at what Jesus did with me. Jesus could easily got Paul when he was out there in the world, y'all. 
He could have said it's time for Paul's appointment. Mm. Time for Paul to fulfill his appointment. But Paul said he didn't do that. He gave me time. He was long-suffering. He put it up with me. He was patient with me. When someone comes back home, they need to see that kind of patience. Mm -hmm. He give them time. <coughs> Be patient with them. So not only do they need to see what forgiveness looks like and what meekness looks like, they need to see what patience looks like. They need to see what assurance looks like. Mm -hmm. They need to see reassurance. In 1 Peter chapter 5, 1 Peter chapter 5, they shouldn't always have to be looking over their shoulder wondering if the Lord cares for them or if you and I truly care for them. They need to see and be reassured. They need to see what assurance looks like. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6, Peter says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. You've got to let them know that the Lord cares for them. And not only do the Lord care for you, but I care for you. Right. I don't know what you've gone through. When you're ready to tell me what you've gone through, I'm sure you'll, time, you'll find time to tell me. When you're comfortable talking about it, I'm sure you'll, you'll find time to tell me. You'll find time to share it with us. <laughs> But until such time, I need to reassure you that God cares for you. And as he cares for you, I care for you as well. Amen. People don't know how much you know until they know how much you care. Mm -hmm. You have to show people that you care for. And when someone has been out there in a dangerous disposition of God, and once they come to that realization, realization how dangerous they have been away from God, what dangerous position they have been in, they need reassurance. They need to be reassured that we care for them. Why do people leave sometimes in the first place? Different reasons. The, the, the sheep lost in Luke chapter 15. The, the sheep left. He just doesn't just know it better. They know the dangers that were out there, he just left. The coin, the coin was also caused somebody else's negligence, carelessness. That coin didn't lose itself. Amen. That coin was lost by that point. That young man, he made a conscious decision, knowing the dangers out there. See, she don't know it was dangerous. They, they are so docile. They have, there's nothing that looks at the sheep. And say, oh my goodness, a sheep. Mm -hmm. Maybe a blade of grass. But there's no animal that looks up and see a sheep coming and it, and it, and it, and it stampedes away. Mm -hmm. Because they are so harmless. Mm -hmm. But they're also, they're harmless, amen. <laughs> they just don't know the dangers that are out there. And this sheep wandered away. That young man, fully aware of what was out there. In fact, he was drawn to what was out there for well reason. Mm -hmm. So he knew what was out there. He knew the dangers of what was out there, but nevertheless, he went. But at least he had the faculties to know, hey, it's dangerous out here, I messed up, and I need to go back home. Right. So people leave for different reasons. But when they come back, they need to be able to see forgiveness. Mm -hmm. right. They need to be able to see meekness. They need to be able to see patience and long suffering. They need to uh, have the reassurance that God cares and we care. And they need to be taught. Maybe they weren't taught well enough. Maybe they were taught. But we always stand in need of being taught. And that's what Paul says to Peter in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 15. Study. This is the time to sit down with them and study, not to grill them. Not to go through and point out all the things that they were involved in. They already know. But they had first-hand knowledge. Right. So they know what things they were involved in. Mm -hmm. But this is the time to teach them and remind them of the love of God. Yes. And what God has done to ensure their spiritual well-being, their spiritual safety, what God has done for them. Mm -hmm. 
So they need to be taught. And I'm not just talking about teaching through the scriptures, but I'm talking about teaching through our lives. We are a living epistle. We are a living letter. Christians are a living letter. Known and read of men. Men read you. Amen. Men read me. And when that lost soul comes back, they are reading us. So we need to be being an example for them. And by being an example for them in the way that God will have us, we are teaching them. So not only is a, a scriptural teaching a reminder of what God's word says, but being an example for them. But uh, what's that singing preacher from Oklahoma? Not, 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 not late, but uh, but he, he sang that song about uh, Christ. Spent my life serving the church of Christ. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Man, Lynch. Tells the story, so Leon, about how he had left the church at one point in his life. Now, another younger brother followed him out into the world. That other younger brother didn't make it back. But this talks about that you can tell, you can, you can see the hurt in him that someone followed him out into the world, they didn't make it back. Our example, right. our lives, the way we live our lives are good yeah. as Christians. We are living letters. Somebody is reading you. Mm -hmm. Every time they come in contact with you, they are reading you. They are reading your life. They are hearing your words. They are seeing your actions. They are looking at you. You want to be an example to them in a way that's going to bless them or in a way that's going to curse them. Mm -hmm. We teach through our lives. So not only do we need to show them forgiveness, let them see forgiveness and meekness and patience and reassurance that God curses them and, and, and that they need to be taught and see in our lives. But they need to see love. Mm -hmm. They need to see love. Because love will hide a multitude of sins. And first Peter 4 is like cold sin. This lesson is yours. If you miss this this morning, you'll be okay. If you miss this, you'll be okay. You just really cannot understand this lesson. Because I made this as plain and simple as I can. We have a responsibility to those who fall away. When they come back home, we have an awesome responsibility to them. The brothers they have responsibility, I'm talking about us. We have responsibility. We need to know what our responsibility is. That's right. We need to show them what forgiveness looks like, what obedience looks like, what patience, what reassurance that God cares, what they need to see in us. We need to teach them that they need to see love. In 1 Peter 4, 8, Peter says, and above all things have fervent love among yourselves. He's talking to and about the church of Christ. Yeah. Have fervent charity among yourselves. For charity or love shall cover the multitude of sin. And remember this. If somebody else the truth and you convert them, you bring them back. You need to know that you who have converted a sinner from the area's way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sin. The only thing that can cover sin is love. Amen. That's why it took Jesus. Mm. It took that level of love to cover sin. It took his blood, it took his love, it took his willingness to hang on the cross to cover our sins. And when someone comes back, they need to see that kind of love. Great love have no man in this, 
that lay out his life for his friend. Amen. If you continue my word, then all you my disciples and thee, you should know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Mm -hmm. As the Father loved me, even so I love you, that you have this love one to another. Amen. That's what we gotta do. That's what it should look like the day after the return of the Son. Get them back home. Amen. Amen. Get them back home. But once they're back home, in the coming days after, there should be a certain look that they see. There should be certain things on display that they see. And this is not just for a little while. Amen. Amen. But this should be an ongoing day. Why? Because we are the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Those men who have been baptized into Christ, I put him on. If we are told in Christ, we ought to look like him. Right. If we've been baptized into him, we ought to look like him. We should have those same traits and characteristics about us that he has about him. We have his DNA growing in our veins. Yeah. People ought to be able to see that, amen? Yeah, yeah. People ought to be able to see that. That's why I made the comment that last week, my brother passed through and stuff. So I said, yes, your brother, he paid it just like yours. Amen. 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 We got the same DNA. Amen. We got the same DNA. So yeah, we got the same head. <laughs> what tree? God won't call your name. <laughs> we all look like Jesus. Somebody ought to be the same. Brother Ty says, somebody ought to be the same. Amen with him. Amen. Somebody ought to be the same. Amen with Jesus. Our speech ought to betray us. Our speech ought to betray us. Remember when they came out and taking Jesus, they had the trial and stuff, and they were talking to some somebody, hey, these guys, yeah. they, 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 they want him. They follow, they follow him. They so said their speech betrayed them. They sound like them. We all sound like God. We all sound like Christ. And when our brothers and sisters come back home, we need to accept them back in our old arms just like Christ would. Amen. Just like the Father. That's all I'm saying. So as people come back, let's remember. When you come back in, mm -hmm. lift them on your shoulders if you can. That's, that's figuratively speaking. Not literally, amen. <laughs> but let them know that they are appreciated. They are welcome. We're glad to have them back. We know that they are back safe and sound. Amen. Pray for them. Mm -hmm. Lift them up in prayer. This is the message. That's what Luke, Jesus said to us in Luke chapter 15. When they come back home, be thankful that they came back home. Let them know you're happy that they're back home. Amen? amen. You do what you can do. Amen? You do what you can do. You got people coming back. People coming back. But at the same time, others are leaving. That's the nature uh -huh. of the church. Amen. Should it be that way? No. But what do we do? We bring them back home. We bring them back home. Some are lost like that sheep. Some are lost like the corn. Some are lost like the boy the left one. And some are lost like the boy who never left the house, but we're still lost. Whatever the situation, when they come back home, it's a time for rejoicing. And the day after they come back home, we have to remember what we need to allow them to see. We need to let them see what God will have us to be. Amen? Amen. Bring them back home. If you're here this morning and not a child of God, you become a child of God and be into the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the first step. You must hear how Jesus the Christ died a cruel death on the cross of Calvary. They took his life and spy off that cross. They laid him in the grave. And on the third day, he died of just seeing sin. They destroyed his body in three days. I raised up. They said, what sign will we have? Said, no sign will be given to you. Of Simon Jones. As he was three days, three nights in the belly of the whale, he was so to the Son of Man for three days, three nights in the belly of the earth. And he got up, and he got up with all power, and he said, Go and tell this story. Tell them I died, was buried, and rose again. That's called the gospel of Christ. And we shouldn't be ashamed of it. Romans 1 16. Paul I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God and salvation to everyone that believes. Jew first also to the Greek. So we shouldn't be ashamed of telling that story. <coughs> when one hears that story, it's important that they believe it. Why is it important they believe? Because without faith, you can't please God. 
Here's a water. Those who filter it, seek him. And if you're going to come to him, you have to come to him by believing. And once you believe that story, it ought to cause you to have a change of mind. Say, this is what God has done for me, and this is the way I'm living. This is what God wants, to be, wants me to look like, and this is what I'm looking like. I need to have a change of mind. That's called repentance. Jesus said, except you repent, you will perish. Luke 13, 3 and 5. The time is given to God, we get down to man, all men everywhere to repent. Acts 17, 30. Gotta repent. And once you repent, you have to be willing to make a confession. I know some of us can't wait to tell stuff from ourselves and other people. Mm -hmm. But the confession that you need to make is that you believe Jesus Christ is some God. And once you make that confession, go down to the water grave of baptism. Have your sins washed away. You contact the blood of Christ. You receive the guilt of the Holy Spirit. You have an answer of a good conscience towards God now. You come about that water, you've been born again. You're the heir of God, you join the heir of Jesus Christ. You're added to the church of Christ. This is body, his wife, he's coming back for her. He says, Be faithful unto death, and I will give you a great crown of life. Mm -hmm. God never won't give my crown. You got to be faithful unto death. He said, I'll be a crown of life that no man can take away. If you're this morning a child of God, fall by this side, come back home. You simply come back home by having it made up in your mind that you have repented of all the things that you've done contrary to Christ. Contrary to God's word, you have changed your mind about all those things. You're ready to start anew. You're ready to come home. Tell the Father that you've changed your mind. You repent. Amen. Ask for his forgiveness. Amen. He'll restore you. And he won't put you on, and this is not meant for He won't put you on the back of you. Okay? He will restore you to the position you had before you left. Amen. He will have the best role put on you. He will have a ring that signifies amen, kinship. Lineage. He will have a ring placed on your finger. He will have shoes put on your feet. He won't start you back at day one. Right. He will bring you back home in the same position you held before you left as his son, as his daughter. Find some other place that does that. Mm. Go out there and have a job for 40 years and leave and come back. <laughs> you got to sweep the floor somewhere, Father. You know, mm -hmm. He will put you back where you were before you left. Nobody else is going to do that for you. Let's allow the angels in heaven to rejoice. Let's rejoice with them this morning. As someone makes a decision to put Christ on in baptism or to come home, you know what you got to do. Do it right now to stand and sing the song to church. Yeah, the fountain.